All right, the second video talks about simplifying expressions using the order of operations. Many of you know the order of operations is parentheses, exponents, multiplication or division, whichever comes first from left to the right, addition and subtraction, whichever comes first from left to right. So this is a little bit misleading because sometimes division will come before multiplication if it's first from left to right and the same thing with subtraction and addition but otherwise the order is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or PEMDAS now look at this example in this example we have parentheses we have exponents we have multiplication we have division um, so let's look at what we do first all right, you see that parentheses comes first. So I'm going to work on what's inside this parentheses. All right, so within the parentheses, what do we have that comes first? Well, exponent. We have an exponent. So I'm going to recopy all the things, except I'm going to do this 3 squared. 3 times 3 is 9. So I'm going to put down 9. All right, that's the first step then within the parentheses do I do the subtraction or the division well of course the division should come first before the subtraction so I'm going to do the division so I'm going to have 18 divided by 6 is 3 so I'll put that down then I'm going to do the subtraction and then 9 minus 3 is 6 All right. Now what does this mean if there's no operation symbol between the two and the parentheses here? It means multiplication, correct. If there's no operation indicated in algebra, it means multiplication. So I should I do the subtraction or the multiplication or the addition? You're right, the multiplication should come first. So I do not do 5 minus 2 next. I just write 5 minus and then I multiply 2 times 6 which is 12 and then I have the plus 4 alright now should I do the subtraction or the addition well it is true that addition comes uh, is in the list first but this left to right thing has to be followed so addition and subtraction are an equal status uh, and the first thing that should be done was the subtraction here because it comes first from left to right so what's 5 minus 12? Well, as we learned in the last video, you could write this as 5 plus negative 12. You could think of it that way. Either way, 5 and negative 12 makes negative 7. All right? And so 5 and negative 12, um, we, we got negative 7. Now we can do the addition. Negative 7 plus positive 4 would equal positive, no, I'm sorry, negative 3. So our solution to this is negative 3. Here's another example. If you have 2 squared times 3 minus 8 over negative 4 plus 6, all right, well, you have a big fraction. Now the division bar will act as a, a separator between the numerator and denominator. So I'm going to look at the numerator first. I'm going to say, okay, 2 squared, I want to do that. So 2 squared is 4. I do one thing at a time. And then on the bottom, I have that. Now I can do my multiplication, which is 12 minus 8. Now it wouldn't hurt to do what's in the bottom anywhere along this process as long as you do everything in the top and and everything in the bottom first before you divide the two. Anyway, 12 minus 4 or 8 is 4 and negative 4 plus 6 is positive 2 and then last of all you can divide 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay? So there's another example. Now, suppose it tells you to evaluate x plus 2y minus z if x is 3, y is negative 5, and z is negative 4. So here 
we're going to get this expression and we're going to substitute in these numbers, plug these numbers in. So x becomes 3, y is negative 5. I'm going to go ahead and put that in parentheses. And then z is negative 4. Notice how any num negative number I'm inserting in, the paren in parentheses, um, that will avoid the mistake of you thinking it as 2 minus 5. It's really 2 times whatever y is, so it's 2 times negative 5. So then we do the multiplication first. Uh, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. And then here, I can change the minus to adding the opposite. So the opposite of negative 4, of course, is going to become positive 4. Okay, And so I have 3 plus negative 10 and then I just change this to adding that negative and then I got a double negative so it becomes positive. So now I do this from left to right. 3 added with negative 10 is negative 7 added with 4 and just as we had up here um, we end up with negative 3 for our answer. Alright, so this is another example. Now Terms in algebra are separated by plus or minus signs. So if you have something like x squared plus 3x minus 7, there are three terms in this expression. Terms are separated by or plus or minus signs. So that means there's going to be three terms. Now, like terms are terms that have the same variable part. Like if I have 3x squared and I have 7x squared, the variable part, x squared, is the same in both terms. If that's the case, then I can add these terms together. Now, 3x squared added with 7x squared well, think of it as this. 3 of them plus 7 of them would make 10 of them. So 10x squared. That's the simplified version of this same expression after we combine like terms. Suppose we have 2x minus 4y plus uh, 6x plus y. Well, are there like terms? Sure. 2x and 6x are like terms. They have the same variable part, x. So 2 of them and 6 of them would make 8x's. Now here, this is a negative 4y. Get into the habit of seeing the minus sign in front of something. Don't miss that. So this is negative 4y, because you could change it to adding the negative 4y, negative 4y and positive 1y. You could think of this like that, negative 4 added 1. All right, well, it's the bigger one is negative, so you end up with negative 3y. Now I could write that as ax and added with negative 3y like that or like that, whichever uh, you want to write it as. Either one like that. Usually most advanced students would write it with just 8x minus 3y because um, less writing to, instead of adding negative 3y. It's the same thing. So what if you add x to the third plus x to the third? Now a lot of students want to add the exponents and say x to the sixth. That is totally wrong. What this means is 1x cubed plus 1x cubed. You can, if there's not a a number in front of called coefficient. If there's not a coefficient in front of the term, you can put 1. 
So what's one of them plus one of them? It equals two of those. Two x third. When you're adding terms, never change the exponent. Never change the exponent. When you're multiplying terms, yes, the exponent changes, but when you're adding or subtract terms, never change the exponent. You only change the coefficient. So we had, uh, let's say, 3x to the 4th minus uh, 8x to the 4th. Are those like terms? You have x to the 4th, x to the 4th. Variable part is the same. So 3 of them minus 8 of them, well that's going to be negative 5 of the same things. Don't change the exponent when you're in terms. So you have the several terms, six, or any lumps.